All right, my friends, here we go, taking a look at lesson, I think it's number five now, uh, for chapter 13.2. It's obviously the big beastie in chapter 13 and has most of the stuff that we're doing here. But remember, everything that we're doing here is learning that we can build these tables of relative strength to have those half reactions, to be able to predict products, balance the equations, and determine spontaneity. And so far in 13.2, we've learned how to make these tables from reaction data. We then learned how to use the one in our data booklet. And then uh, our last lesson, we were taking a look at this and we were being able to, from the entities method, look at all of the various things, identify all of our relative OAs and RAs with relative strengths and determine the reaction uh, from those two half reactions that represented the strongest and uh, OA and RA respectively. This balanced it for us and we were even able to produce uh, or interpret spontaneity from it much like we would from those reaction tables. So, we've done lots and lots and lots and lots with being able to get those balanced equations. What we have to, uh, for this lesson is what do we do in order to be able to predict redox, react predict redox reactions from making them? Or in other words, what happens when they're not here? or the question doesn't give them. There has to be something that we can do to be able to make some of these so that we can still continue the process. Because I think we can all agree that one page in a tiny data booklet isn't an exhaustive list of all the various reductions that can take place. So, if our necessary half reaction is not on the table, we're going to build it ourselves. And so we get a second five-step method by which to do this. All right, the questions will guide you one way or the other, and you'll see throughout the examples when you do entities versus construction. So here we have our construction five-step method, if that helps differentiate it for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have some sort of skeleton equation to work from. And what we're gonna try and do is look at our chemical reactants and products, and then make sure that they are balanced first. We might see lots of oxygen and hydrogen in these various problems, and so we're going to reserve those till later. Once we've balanced everything that is not uh, oxygen or hydrogen, we will then balance the oxygens by adding water. And so there is a reason for this. All right, we're talking about how water can be a player in some of these things, and so oxygen exchanges with different entities in water usually involve the water as the source or the product of these things. Uh, as we go through. All of these are going to happen in acidic solution. These are the only ones that we're going to uh, work with. All right, so we will be told that we're talking about balance or creating these, constructing these in acidic solutions. And so we will balance the H's by the available hydronium that's there. Finally, this will give us all of the particles that are balanced and we'll be able to assess the charges on each side and then add electrons to whatever side is necessary in order to balance charge because you do have a particle with charge moving back and forth and so it is a conservative property. It is something that we have to balance in the equations in electrochemistry much like we balanced everything else. And then finally, much like in Hess's law, if you remember in thermo, we're going to cancel anything that appears on both sides so we can simplify these final equations as well. So, to start, let's look at a very simplified one. Here's just a half reaction between sulfur and sulfur dioxide. Somehow sulfur oxidizes or reduces to SO2, and we just we don't know yet. But we're told that this took place in acidic solution, so we can go through our new five-step method and come up with a solution to this one. So we have sulfur transforming into sulfur dioxide. Okay, first thing that I want to do then is make sure that anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen is balanced. And I see one mole sulfur, one mole sulfur, we're golden. So now I can go on to the second step here and I can balance out any oxygens that I have by adding water to the equation. Look at this one. Where did sulfur get the oxygens from to make sulfur dioxide gas? Well, it had to be some sort of other reactant here and so it's going to take two water molecules to supply the two oxygens and balance the equation for the oxygens. But by doing this now, er, I have 
now introduced a bunch of hydrogen. And so with my hydrogen here, I'm going to balance that with the H plus ions that are in this acidic solution as well. So here's four hydrogens. All right. I would then have, since oxygen's been stolen from this, four H pluses in solution. So now at this point, everything is balanced except the charge. Here I have all my hydrogens are balanced, my oxygens are balanced, sulfur's balanced. Now I just need to take a look at your charge. On this side of the equation here, you can see that there is no surplus charge. Everything is neutral. On this side of the equation, I have a neutral sulfur dioxide, but I have four H plus ions. So my total charge here is four plus. Where or where could I add negative electrons in order to equate these two charges? If I add four electrons to this side, I'll have four and four, but would they be four positive charges on both sides? No, they wouldn't. This would make this four negative, four positive. Your charge is not balanced. So I could add four electrons to the product side, positive four plus four negative electrons now gives me a total charge of zero, and my two sides are conserved in charge. And so we can see that we get our half reaction in, particular, in, in particular, an oxidation half reaction. Okay, so we didn't have sulfur to sulfur dioxide anywhere on here, so we made our own. And knowing it's an acidic solution, we have the water and the hydrogens available to add back and forth to this various equation. Okay, first example, hopefully it's a little bit clear. Let's see what happens in a half reaction here in which we start off with nitrate ions in solution, somehow forming nitrogen monoxide gas. Now as we look at this one, we do have to balance our nitrogens. That's, the, pardon me, the only element uh, that we have that is not oxygen or hydrogen. And so one nitrogen each, that's good. Now we can start balancing our oxygens. We'll do this by adding water to one of the sides or the other. And so here's nitrogen with three oxygens. This one only has one oxygen, so I'm going to need two more oxygens. And so to do that, I'm going to have to add two moles of water to the product side. Now I have three oxygens and three oxygens. That's looking good. From here, all right, I now have added or introduced to this equation four hydrogens. But it's taking place in acidic solution, so I can balance those out by four H plus ions on the other side. Now my hydrogens are also equal. What do I have for charges here? Because I have to balance my charges. On this side, I have four one plus charges and a negative charge to give me a surplus of plus three. This side, however, is still neutral. So where do I need to add electrons in order to balance this? Can I add electrons to the plus three side to bring it down to zero? Or can I add negative electrons to the zero side to bring it to plus three? I think it's kind of obvious. I can only reduce this charge down to zero. Adding on this side never gets me any closer to balance. So I will add three electrons as a reactant here, and you can see that we have a reduction half reaction. Okay, so this does have a cadence or a sequence. Just follow along with it every single time and it will work out. Balance things that are not oxygen and hydrogen. Balance oxygens with water. Balance hydrogens with H+. Balance the electrons. And then do a quick one over. I don't see anything common here that needs to be canceled out. Let's get another example in here. And so for this one, we can see that we have a skeleton net equation. Ooh, this is a little bit tougher. Okay, but remember, all of our problems, regardless of how we get them, are two halves, one oxidation half and one reduction half. In these ones, when we don't have the entities or all of the entities available to see the oxidation or reduction, or the OA and RA, we're still going to have to construct it from this method. And so, in this one, we have to make a decision. All right, you can see you have a nitrogen compound, a chloride compound, a nitrogen compound, and a chloride compound. 
Redox chemistry doesn't have the power to transform one element into another, so likely I have one pathway here and another pathway here. Those are my two half reactions. What I'm lacking here is all of the information about oxygen, water, hydrogen, and charge to be able to ultimately know if they're oxidation or reduction. There's just too much other stuff going on. So I will build my two half reactions and start my five-step method. So nitrogen dioxide gas somehow becomes nitrate ions and HClO, all right, my hypochloric acid, somehow becomes just chloride ions. Okay, let's make sure that everything that is not oxygen or hydrogen is balanced and the nitrogens seem okay here. Two oxygens then on this side, three on this side, so my left side is going to need at least one water. This introduces some hydrogens. There are two hydrogens now in this equation that aren't reflected on the other side, so I will fix that with two H plus ions. From there, I need to take a look at my charges, and I can see that I'm neutral on the left. I am a total charge of plus one on the right. There's a negative plus two positives, that's plus one, that's neutral. I have to add a single electron to the right here in order to be able to balance my charges. Now I have two negatives, two positives to balance out to the neutral on the other side. And you can see, again, we have an oxidation reaction. Doing the next one, all right, chlorine is the only thing that's not oxygen or hydrogen, and you have one of each, so we're good on the first step. Now we can balance out our oxygens. I have one as a reactant, but none as a product, so it's going to take at least one water in our overall balancing back and forth, and we're now good on our oxygens. Two hydrogens have been introduced. I only have one over here, so I'm going to need another H plus aqueous on that side to balance my hydrogens, and now I can take a look at my charges. On this side right here, I have a total of plus one. On this side, I have a total of minus one, so it's totally balanced, right? Mm, no, only in magnitude. Okay, so I need to make sure that I can get the two sides to be equal in both magnitude and charge type. And so negative one or positive one, to add negative electrons to this one, I can only balance to this side. So I'll have to add two electrons to make the new charge on this side minus one, and they are now balanced, and we can see a reduction half reaction. Okay, so that's two examples in. This one coming from kind of like the net ionic stuff that we had back in 13.1. We've seen this before. Okay, and so we did have to find the two half reactions before we could go through and construct the half reactions. So I found what was in red and then built from there. I could keep going. I could even turn this into a net redox if I really wanted to. Okay. So, uh, this video is getting a little bit lengthy. What I would have you guys do is try example three on your own before you watch the next video. And uh, from there, see how it goes compared to the solution that you'll see in our last video here for 13.2. And uh, we'll complete the examples and uh, put 13.2 to bed. See you in the next one.